solar wind flowing from Sun's large coronal hole could reach Earth October 30th and 31st. We have just now felt the latest that has reached us October from the uh, hole that was uh, spewing out solar wind October 26th. The faint slow moving CME that left the sun on October 26th might hit Earth's magnetic field today and tomorrow, according to NOAA forecasters. The impact, if any, would be weak, probably causing polar geomagnetic unrest, but not full fledged storms. And we have a close encounter with gigantic jets. When you see lightning, you have to run. And that's what NOAA advises in lightning safety brochures. On October 15th, though, a pilot, Chris Holmes, had no place to go when lightning started to crackle in thunderstorms around his aircraft that he was flying. He said, I was flying 35,000 feet over the Gulf of Mexico near the Yucatan Peninsula when a supercell started pulsing with light. He said it was just ordinary lightning though. The cell was creating lots of sprites and jets leaping up from the thunderhead at a distance of only 35 miles. And he has some wonderful pictures in here. It was the most amazing thing he says I've ever seen in my aviation career. Holmes had a close encounter with a gigantic jet, sometimes called Earth's tallest lightning because they reach all the way up to the ionosphere, that's 50 miles high. The towering forms were discovered near Taiwan and Puerto Rico in 2001 to 2002. Since then, only a, do only a dozen of gigantic jets have been photographed in previous images taken by cameras on the ground. It's almost impossible to see the base of the jet over the edge of the thundercloud. That's why Holmes' video is special. He was filming above the storm and practically point-blank range. His clip shows very nicely the top of the cloud where the jet emerges, which is usually hidden from view. This is what Oscar van der Velt says of the Lightning Research Group at the University Politecnica de Catalunya, who examined the footage. He says, I split the video into individual frames so you can see exactly what happens. It basically starts in the cloud and goes all the way up. Instead of from up going down, this one goes from down going up. So Van der Velt's deconstructed reveals uh, the order of events. First, relatively cool blue filaments spring up. These are streamers akin to St. Elmo's fire. And then he says, after that, the jets reach its maximum height. Another feature crawls more slowly out of the cloud top a white hot lightning leader. And it turns out it's a bit of a surprise because for years some researchers thought that gigantic jets could reach such extreme heights only if their streamers got a boost from the lightning leader. Holmes' video shows just the opposite though. The gigantic jet reaches the ionosphere before the lightning leader even leaves the cloud. Does this, do this suggest that there may be a much more powerful electric configuration inside the thunderstorm than was previously thought. Perhaps as much as 200 million volts, Vanderveel said. Now, it just goes to show that we still have a lot to learn about gigantic jets and thunderstorms and lightning storms. Now, we do have coronal hole, the image of the sun, 29th of October today, the solar wind flowing from this large coronal hole, could reach Earth on October 30th and 31st. Today we had 54 fireballs, as opposed to 26, 21, uh, yesterday, the day before, 54 fireballs. We had 38 sporadics, 9 orionids, 7 southern turids, two Epsilon Geminids, and one O Torrid. The uh, image that you see of the fireballs has uh, color codes. The orbits are color coded by velocity from slow, which is red, to fast, which is blue. And they're all coming towards our Earth, intersecting 
the single point Earth. We have, as of today, 2018 potentially hazardous asteroids, near-Earth asteroids. They're space rocks larger than about 300 feet across, or 100 meters, that can come closer to Earth than 0.05 AU. None of the known uh, potentially hazardous asteroid PHAs is on the collision course with our planet, although astronomers are finding new asteroids all the time. Cosmic rays in the atmosphere. They develop new predictive models of aviation radiation called ERAD, short for Empirical Radiation Modeling. They said we, we constantly fly, fly radiation sensors on board planes over the U.S. and around the world, and so far collecting more than 22 GPS-tagged radiation measurements. Using this unique data set, we can predict the dosage on any flight over the U.S. with an error of no worse than 15%. ERAD lets us do something new, and every day we monitor approximately 1,400 flights crisscrossing the 10 busiest routes in the continental United States. This includes more than 80,000 passengers per day. ERAD calculates the radiation exposure for every single flight. They also had space for the balloons going up every once a week. And the students from Earth to Sky Calculus fly space weather balloons to the stratosphere over California. The balloons are equipped with radiation sensors detecting cosmic rays, a surprisingly down-to-earth form of space weather. Cosmic rays can seed clouds, trigger lightning, and penetrate commercial airplanes. Furthermore, there are studies linking cosmic rays with cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death in the general population. Our latest measurement shows that cosmic rays are intensifying with an increase of more than 18% since the year 2015. Now, why are cosmic rays intensifying? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds, such as coronal mass ejections, CMEs, sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass by Earth. During solar minimum, uh, solar maximum, CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. But now, the solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum, allowing cosmic rays to return. Another reason could be that the weakening of uh, the Earth's magnetic field is taking place. The Earth's magnetic field, we know, helps protect us from deep space radiation. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.